And here we are, we're in the first finals of the qualification tournaments that lead to that very name. The finals 2022 is in two months time. And after this game, we will know the first competitor to qualify. It's either going to be Ashablar from the south of not only Crossroads, but also Korea. And playing as the Soviets, and he's versus a very formidable opponent. My co-caster today, Findeed, will introduce the northern participants. Yeah, we in the north today. We've got Isildur, the one, the only, the best Company of Heroes player out there right now. He's smashed uh, Orange Pest in a 2-0 leading up to this. Uh, coming up against Asher, who's who's had a, a dirty 2-1. Uh, and so it might not be as fresh as Isildur coming into this. No, again. And I, I said to Isildur, you know, I know it's not your fault you win 2-0 every time, but is there any chance we can offer Asher Blor a 20-minute break? And to his credit, he was more than happy to let Ashablaw have double the uh, mandatory 10-minute uh, break that most players uh, take. So yeah, we've had a 20-minute break uh, for this one. Very it's easy. Nice. It's easy to be nice when you know you're going to win anyway, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, we will bring up the player cards in one moment, just after we've had an eye on this engagement as the pioneers force pretty much everything away there. So here are the um, player cards for the two participants. You've got Ashablar on the left and Isildur on the right. ashablar has got very good uh, very good stats. He's got a very similar play style in some ways to Isildur, actually. He's just not quite as refined and not quite as good. And his resolve is uh, is eight because, quite frankly, he's not won as much. That's the that's the X factor in coming of heroes. Your ability to win a tournament, your resolve, and Isildur has shown that in spades. He has, he has. He's he spent a long time honing his skills in the two v two scene and smashed into the one v one scene not too long ago now, and, and, and proven that the superior game mode is indeed two v two, isn't it? A oh, certainly. There's nothing better than <laughs> removing the flankability of the fighting in Company of Heroes. Do you know what I've always said? I hate the dynamic nature of Company of Heroes battles, Vindeed. Make it a 2v2. It's much better. Much, much better. Oh, yeah. I mean, the narrower the bat map, the better the game, right? 2v2 is on rails and metal, and especially are my favourite. Give me a <laughs> rails and metal tournament, in fact. Pioneers and an MG, of course, backing them up. Isildur's pushing in hard here. We've got light cover used by Ashablar versus Iskarendi. He's just double teaming the narrow one window of this house here. Meanwhile... Isildur's taken uh, Gren behind the heavy cover. He's got another one joining the fighting soon. And surely the eviction notice was given ages ago. There they go. They finally vacated the premises. I initially thought that would be a great move from, from Asher to sort of force this engagement where he'd, he'd have all these men firing at the window. But he lost six models for that two models of the Gren squad. That was a very good trade. He was. He bloody was. Can I tell you um, a secret, Fundeed? Of course, I'm, I'm well known Alpern. for my ability to keep secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Alpern uh, has pointed out that something... Uh, one of the stats boffins pointed out to him. There's no point in getting too close to a window because the he the, the cover bonuses in Company Heroes, um, they do stay for somebody in a garrison. But if you get too close to any unit outside of a garrison, they disappear. So anything within 10 meters, the bonuses all disappear. And that is to reward close quarter combat um, units. But um, if you get close to a garrison, they keep the green cover bonus. So it doesn't matter if you're here or here or here. They're going to have the bonuses. You're not going to have any. And that is why you never do what Ashablar just did. <laughs> yeah, if you can... Obviously, you want to maximise your DPS, and so you, you might want to get a little bit closer than, than than max range, but certainly that didn't work out for Asher there. No. You basically become like it's the reverse of what you're expected to do. Oh, God, conscripts are caught off guard there. Double Grens. Not only find them, but punish them. Meanwhile, Isildur has pushed down in the east. Um, just if you didn't know, this is the um, ML version of of uh, Crossroads, got a few notable differences, got this hedgerow in the north to stop this garrison being too exploitable. Uh, this gap's been widened slightly, and we've got a few new flanking hedgerows, um, just to give us that 1v1 feeling, so you can get round the sides. Yeah, we've been doing a lot of work on the uh, on this map in particular, as uh, one of the tournament favourites, but just game's taking a little too long, being a little too indecisive. Uh, we've gone through a lot of changes here. It's good to see 
<laughs> that we're still working and improving this game all the way after it's release in... Oh, I can't even remember now. When was this game released? 2013. 2013. I was but a 20, a two-year-old. And now look at me. Uh, so, Big, Dino, Big Dino's in chat with the 10 sub gifts. Thank you very much. But well, back lovely. to this battle. Uh, we've got a 2-2-2 two, two, two coming out for Isilda and Ashablaw. He's not got on his uh, 18 so we will have a glorious happy period of hunting for this scout car. Seeing lots of early scout cars today. And there's a very own sub gift for Ashablar. He's gifted himself a Dushka. Construction is complete. Self presents are always the best presents, aren't they? Indeed, they you are. You know exactly what you want. It's never a surprise unless you got you were very drunk and you went on Amazon uh, the <laughs> night before. And then in ca that case, it is a surprise. Guys, do you know what you want to do tonight? I mean, you know, I have work or school the next morning. It is a Sunday. But get blind drunk and go on Amazon and gift yourself something. You'll thank yourself later. A, pneumati uh, a pneumatical uh, dildo helmet, perhaps. Or maybe a 20-foot stuffed giraffe. You just don't know what you could gift yourself. It's it's fun. There's always the, the chance you accidentally buy a Rolex and, and then wake up in uh, huge amounts of debt. Ah, but you could get a brand new job as a car salesman. Oh, that's true. That's true, it's true. And you could work yourself out of that debt over a period of several decades. <laughs> um, <laughs> Grenadiers are getting dawned upon by the two cons of Asher here. But SVT is now dropping from the skies. Has he got an... Yes, he's got an 18 aids. To be honest, Asher's not doing too bad. Although he has lost uh, both fuels temporarily there, meaning Casilda's Panzer IV is getting ever closer. Yes, indeed. We haven't got any... We're giving the first set of SVT rifles for Conscript. Whoever retreats first gets the the upgrade. Oh, it's um, a competition. The, the reverse. If I got that invitation from my local NKVD officer, I wouldn't sense a trap. <laughs> hey, if you retreat, we've got some nice guns for you. Uh, this is a trap. <laughs> Sorry, did we say nice guns? We meant nice bullets. Yeah. <laughs> first man gets the rifle. Oh, God. Yeah. If any uh, any budding um, computer game developers are listening, uh, please don't make any campaigns about the Eastern Front using this as your primary narrative. That mm. would be a bad idea. Pretty sure they just watched uh, Enemy at the Gates and then decided to make that into a game. Oh, guys, I've seen this amazing film. We've got to make a game about this. <laughs> <laughs> Thing is, Call of Duty 2 had already done that. They basically made... Um, Coding Heroes 1 about Band of Brothers and Call of Duty 1. Also, of course, Medal of Honor. And then they made uh, Code 2 about Call of Duty 2. Yeah, yeah. It must be difficult, though, but, you know, you should really get some good history buffs in to, to advise for a game like this, because so many people know so much about this period. And they'll let I you do. know if you get it wrong. Oh, yeah, and I get it wrong all the time. I like to think I know about it. Anyway, Gren's pushing in. Going to neutralise the cutoff before being forced away, unless he gets an Uror off. Or can he get there? Just... No, he can't. There's a nice little rifle nade as well. Isilda even makes, uh, makes that look easy. There's a nasty rifle grenade. Got to watch out for those clumping units around an MG. Especially behind light cover. Light cover is the... Uh, is, can be so punishing in that respect. Look at this in the north as well. Asilda's camping the cutoff there. He's such, so calm and methodical. He is. Makes it look easy, doesn't he? Yeah, he certainly does. It's, one, it's wonderful to watch and... Uh, that's why we're going to have a very interesting period of time. We've got two months of concentrated company heroes activity. Isilda will qualify today. Spoiler alert. And um, we'd be very surprised if he doesn't, won't we, Findeed? Yeah, he's he's on top form at the moment. He's, he's, he's shown that he's got what it takes today. Um, there's always a risk, isn't there? That, that you just don't show up on the day. But if we get Isilda qualifying today is, is it's likely we're going to see then at least we don't have to to watch his stomps for the, for the remainder of the qualification tournaments no but the good news is is we have um a lot of history of people qualifying first in events and it not being great um aimstrong qualified first for snf4 and he was bested by devon who qualified last 
in SNF4. The biggest coming here is one tournament. And then in GCS2, it was DevM's turn to qualify first in the first qualification of the event of the four. And we all know how his GCS2 went. It did not go very well. He lost to Referro and then Helping Hands. So basically qualifying first in these four tournament events can be a bit of a curse. So if Vasilda does that today, what will what could happen is all the other players go away and they, they keep training and they've got three further events to hone their craft. And then we'll have a very, very competitive finals. Yeah, and there's definitely something we're hoping for. The the, the sort of training that you put in beforehand is, is invaluable and, and getting those tournament games where everybody's playing to their absolute best is is such good training because you, you get to well nobody likes to give their you know show their hand with the the secret strategy they've been playing but in tournaments you, you have to deploy them so it'll be good to see whereas another advantage that Isodor might have if he, if he qualifies first is that you can save his his special secret source tactics for the, for the <laughs> The real matches, you know. He does get to watch, yeah. And, and based on his uh, profile of simply getting a kick out of being the best, I, I don't think he'll get too complacent, but it is possible. Uh, back to the tactics of this game. I mean, Asherblar is battling his hard. It's just to try and get the fuel and victory point back. He did try and push into the center, but it didn't go overly well. It looks like this heavy cover was too powerful. The Ziska needed to help out with the flamethrower to, of course, delete the sandbag. It's in position now. And I have to say his composition is coming along nicely, Findeed. It is, it is. We've got the... The Dushka can, can actually handle a, an MG42 up up front, which might help him break this deadlock of uh, the double MGs that are so well known for austere on this map. One in the centre, one for a particular VP, whichever side you want. And it completely locks things down. There we go. With Coffee's the... been drank. Let's see if I need the coffee to help hype cast this game. Let's see if Ashblock can work his way back in. We're, we, As we well know, this map is notorious in tournaments for having the Soviet cube of preservation in the southeast. <laughs> and let's see if he can play like Nagano and work his way slowly into this series. Talking about Nagano, we saw um, the MG pushed off by the 2 2 2 and it's something you'd never see from Nagano, as he likes to keep his MGs and AT guns locked, locked together, one protecting the other. Uh, we'll see if Asher decides to take this up. The MG coming into the flank now. Could Ooh, just for helping out. That was nice. It's a shame about the conscripts getting forced off, but we do have a combat engineer in to help out as well. I'd have to say Asilda seems to have defended himself um, very well indeed. That doesn't seem... Well, this, this barrage could help out. That could be a good one. Ooh. That certainly helps. Nearly gets the whole squad there. The damage, the damage in this overall scenario in the first 13 minutes is that Ashablaw has last has nearly lost 40% of his victory point tally. Oh. Let's check out the stats as well. It's uh, 56 kills to 32, and on points held, the only other graph that's important in this stage, you can see that Asilda was rocking 10 to at one point Ashablaw's four, and only now has it begun to equalise. Yeah, that's certainly not good news for um, Asher. Especially as now this is getting into the, uh, the Isildur danger zone where he's got his, his army out and he's ready to sort of put the hurt on. What do you think's next in the build for Asher? Next in the build for Asher is this T70 to die to this pack who's tracking him. And it hits that haystack. Oh, that was giant for Asherblar. A little bit yeah, of a 1980s uh, British wrestling pun left in there for anybody that's sufficiently old. But yeah, well played. Well played indeed. Well played, yeah. Ventratron in chat loves Isilda. I bet he was the kind of kid that loved Man United in the 1990s. Or loved Chelsea in the 2000s. Or now is a big, big Man City fan. Only joking, Vengetron. It's, 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 it's fashionable to always hate on the guy that's on top, isn't it? The Michael Schumacher, the Roger Federer, the Novak Djokovic certainly of now, although I can confirm Isilda has had a full bevy of uh, gene editing vaccines. Joking. Um, he's, a, he's a witcher now, isn't he? <laughs> he is indeed. 
We oh, the people are out and going so for the MG. Can he bring the house down before he can get it? Oh, out? it's close! He's oh. getting in there! Not he needed one more corner. He would have had it. A, the conscripts were able to build their sandbags. They've got SVT rifles in the center. That's not looking too bad, to be honest. He's also snuck up and taken the fuel away in the north. Meanwhile, in the center, Panzer IV is having a lovely time now, but the Ziskins just found him. We also have a battle emerging in the east. This just heated up, indeed. We were covering for the slowness of the pace with some very hilarious banter and charm and wit. <laughs> but now we have to talk about the game again. It's fantastic stuff. This really strong position here for Asher in the middle is going to be quite a, hot, tough, a tough nut to crack. He's going to need a nut cracker. He's going to need something more than a T-70 for certain. Conscripts capping the victory point despite imminent death, but that was a, gu a guise for the Ziskun to push up and try and take him out. Uh, a, a mistake from Isildur in the centre. He lost a, a, a Gren to, to nothing for Conscript fire. Really? Yeah, he Oh, did. there it is indeed. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Meanwhile, T-70's evading pack fire and getting out of there scot-free. So Isildur with a rare mistake in the center. Well caught by her co-caster Findeed using some of that tournament uh, skill to keep an eye on the game as it goes, as it develops. Oh yeah, I mean, I've been 4,000 hours into Co and all, all I can really say is that I can spot a unit die in casting. <laughs> <laughs> well, um... Jan252 was going to help me with that, but he built something that only works in replays, but Tightrope's making great use of it in replays. And that's uh, it pops up with a notification whenever anything dies on screen. Oh, really? Uh, well, that's, and that's cool. I've never seen that before. I know. I was joking about Jan building something in the last game, but he actually did make this, and it is a real thing. And this is just a message to all my YouTube peeps. I can't make it happen for live obs. Sorry. Um, but yeah, rare mistake from Isilda. Gren down. But he's got two MGs, two Pyros, three Grens, and a Panzer IV, so he shouldn't be too lacking. I'm just wondering if maybe the reason this happened is because uh, it's always in TAC map, and the MG card overlaid the Grenadier card, and he just didn't see it go down. Indeed, I've got a question for you next time we have a lull in activity. It's not about the game either. What is your finest achievement in those 4,000 hours? Because you've played quite a few tournaments. Have you got any notable wins? Oh, um... It's a tough one. I did. I do better in auto match than I do in tournaments, and I've, I've basically scout at some point. <laughs> I know. To be fair, I never did beat Zarot's Maxim Spam. That was <laughs> the worst part of my career. <laughs> oh, this barrage on the retreating Grens. They're gonna be okay though. Panzer Ford does not want to tango with the two Zis guns, and we now have the Nagorno-esque deep defense red line for the blue Soviet player. But you know what I mean. It's the Reds. Um, it's set up. He's got his two Sis guns. He's got his Dushka. He's got four conscripts nearly with all SVTs. He can defend now. He also has the central victory points as we live and breathe. So Asilda's up against it. He is, and he's got the double Ooh. the double uh, potential Sis barrage there to dislodge these MGs. And in fact, one goes down from a Sis barrage in the center. And it looks like... Does, can he take it? No, Grens are going to have to take it in the meantime. That's a 30 manpower reinforcement cost MG. But here comes the LAB. That's the light artillery barrage. Has oh, not seen it. First salt volley's a good one. Second from the sky above's even better. Dushka, what are you thinking? He's sticking it out and he's lost the double pip of veterancy. And they've traded MGs as well. Oh, Conscript's about to die in the center. Oh no, it's gone so badly. But here's an 18 to take out the 2-2-2. They're trading here on crossroads. And it's really beginning to heat up now this final. It is, it is, and it's, this is going to be a crucial battle. Ash has lost quite a lot. But if he can make this work, he's still in with a chance. Oh, Crucially, he's still got his double AT die. guns, which is the, the life save for him. Don't forget, though, guys, this Dushka did only cost 125 munitions and 50, sorry, 50 munitions, 125 manpower. So it's not the end of the world, especially at the end of the world if you can actually take it. One more pack shot. Oh, it misses, meaning he's able to take the heavy machine gun back. Rifle nade, dodged, and there it is! Just as the back shot came in! Just as it came in, he was milliseconds away. <laughs> that whistle pass there is. Oh my god. <laughs> Welcome to the party, pal. GY Gulag in chat, first time viewer. 
If you're watching this, welcome everybody. And if you want to keep funding these said activities, we've got a Patreon. Every penny, every cent goes to the players' pockets via prize pools. We're keeping the game alive whilst we wait for Relic to make Co3. Um, so go and um, find the Patreon. Thank you, KPEN. We're at 94 patrons right now. I want to see 100. That'd be $1,000 a month. We've got this big tournament series ongoing, and we've got some very juicy unannounced plans. Uh, I'll just tell Findeed what the plans are, and we'll see if he says yes. I'm going to mute the stream a second. You know? <laughs> Let's do that. So do you want to do that? Yeah. Sure. Oh, he wants to do it. Findeed's on board. I just explained to Findeed what the future plans are, and he's fully on board. So uh, he's excited, and I am too. We've got some great plans ready to announce. Uh, we've we'll announced them at the end of this tournament series. And uh, yeah, get on board, guys. We've a bit of a hype golden period for Company Heroes 2 in its latter days as the Zisk gun advances and the conscripts watch on. Got SVT Conf looking to get back the central victory point, but there's a lot of machine and Gewehr standing in their way. Yeah, this is not a good play to, to try and attack the center right now for Asher. I think he's going to have to back off and reassess. This Odor is looking in a commanding position. He's got a big fuel float and some manpower in the bank. Or his Ash is down on both fuel and manpower. Yes. And at the moment, he doesn't have VP control either, so... Oh my god, he's going for a Panzerwerfer for next. That is a surprise tactic from Isilda. This could catch him off guard, Asher. He's got these two Ziskuns grouped. They're often near the Dushka. And this could be a fantastic blow from Isilda. Don't forget as well, he's also got light artillery and Stuka support lined up as well. He can't use them simultaneously, but he can definitely synergize them with the... Stuka, not Stuka, it's a Panzerwerfer. Panzerwerfer, yeah. If he can catch out these AT, AT guns, he can definitely dive in and maybe get the T-70, which has been causing a lot of, him a lot of pain so far. Oh, he does, it's like, I'm sorry, I feel like we're watching uh, like a zebra going to drink at the water. It doesn't know what's lying, <laughs> waiting for it in the high grass. Esilda is a crouched... Tiger ready to strike, or a lion in this case, if we're doing a savannah kind of feel. And he's ready to lunge in and go for the jugular. He's got pioneers spotting. He knows exactly where they are. He's got an LAB as well. And here comes Ooh. the Panzerwerfer. Rocket artillery from the sky above. And there's the Stuka, rather, taking out the T-70. It was a Stuka all along. What a fantastic strafe from Asilda. And actually was play. left reeling. Forcing Asher to respond to the, the, the rocket artillery bar barrage and then sending in the straight while he knew he'd be distracted. Excellent play there. Oh, and here comes the Panzer IV as well. But that was all led, by the way, everybody, and this is one of the biggest things we've been um, telling Relic from 2018 onwards do we want to see more of in the game, reconnaissance abilities. And I know you can do that in Code 2, but I want to see more of it in Code 3. That's why scouts are available on US FYI. Because the community requested more abilities like that. Pioneers jump in the house. They spot what's needed. And then the Stuka comes down from the sky above. And it makes the skill ceiling. It elevates it. And hopefully we get more features like that. I'd love it if you can go up to a uh, base hedgerow with a scout, um, Findy, and see what's inside. What do you think? Sounds like a good idea. You could have an animation of a guy po poking his head through a bush. Ah! That would be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking more like a radio. But yes, uh, a voyeuristic, perverted... Bush guy. Bush That'd guy, be yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, because it's very difficult to make intelligent decisions if you just simply don't know what's going on. Uh, and having those recon abilities gives a, a useful thing for, your, for you to be able to do, do to get yourself back into the game. And they are lacking in Code 2. It is meant to be uh, ML um, Crossroads Affiz, but uh, unfortunately I don't know where the logo's gone on this version. <laughs> Disappeared. Don't know how that happened. Maybe it has an expiration date. Maybe it's yogurt or something. <laughs> it's like that phone that they put on uh, football pitches. Yes, to show it stick is. The kick. Yeah. <laughs> it's a free kick phone. Yeah. It's a free kick phone. <laughs> By the way, Ashabar. Yeah, indeed. He's got the Katusha out. He's lining up his shots. And he also has... The, uh, he was looking for it. He was going to answer back with a Sturmovic. 
That would have been amazing, but the Panzer IV was nowhere to be seen. It was currently in the centre. T-34 went looking for it, hoping for the best. But unfortunately, it wasn't as well-timed as a Silder. And Vindeed, any guesses as to why it didn't work quite as well? Uh, not going to draw. <laughs> no! The top, it's it's very happen. topical. It, no, it's <laughs> not true. This at the time, it is an LAB, by the way. He's going to hit the Zis guns with an LAB. Reconnaissance, baby. Where was the combat engineers leading the fray? They were too far behind. So, uh, busy, busy repairing up the T-34. Big Dino's reckons it's GG, lads. So I'm not so sure, Big Dean. He's got 270 victory points and he's still in this with a shout. He's in the Soviet cube of resistance. Very much the Soviet cube now. But he is getting, ver he's getting his face uh, verfed off. Yeah, and it's exactly what Dissledor needs. He needs that indirect fire to, to force his AT guns to reposition and, and put some hurt onto an otherwise very defensible position. So what, Grenz is ready for a flank this time as well. Maybe we'll see this new flanking route used. Look at the fuel of a Silder as well. He's gone. Oh, he's gone battle phase three. That was the lull there. Wonder what he's gonna do. Wonder what he's gonna do with it. Maybe a bomb there. Oh, yeah, Panzer IV with a good, shot through the bushes. Option. Now you're talking. He can see you through those bushes. He's got his X-ray specs on. Oh yeah. Oh, Gren could die in the west. No, it doesn't. Silver sees it on that tack map overview of his. There's this sneaky teller in, in the mid as well, which is oh, just there? waiting for... <laughs> yeah, just, just south of the house. I see it. Yeah. Yeah, there's two then. If there's one south oh, yeah. of the house, there's two. You've got one either side of the central victory point. Just waiting for Asher to make that push in so we can trap him. Certainly is Panzer IV now. It's a bit of a deceptively long retreat path for those cons. The Panzer IV's on prioritised vehicle mode. Here's some more Verf in action. On the Casbar. Reducing its health and uh, smattering its goods around the place. Now use it as a nice place to make some tea. Oh, mate, I had a stunning cup of tea earlier. My mum <laughs> has got uh, Royal Dalton teapots from here in the potteries. And I tell you, why does tea taste better when it's made in fine china? And you have it in a teapot. What is... What are the chemical properties of that, or is it a human placebo, indeed? What I've got no idea. I've I've not had much tea from a teapot, I must say. I've, I've been oh, it's a so much better. Lacking. It's, you have I to send me why. a teapot as a reward for casting with you. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll send you a teapot, mate. You drop me your address. Instead of sending you that uh, 10 quid I was going to send you from PayPal, I'll send you a teapot. How about that? It might get That'd smashed. That'd be great. I'd love that. Oh, I will, because we make them. I work. I won't say where I work, but we might make teapots. Yeah, we've got Isildur over here making a big play for the, the VP. He doesn't oh, want this to is a good, forever. That's a good... No, it's not. What the hell is that volley? There it is. That's better. Meanwhile, everything's in the centre. It's all on this. Ash has been going for Max Rain's uh, Katusha barrages, which has been giving him a pretty bad spread, actually. Might want to be getting up a little closer to the, to the front line to improve his ability to wipe these units. Wait, that was one of the worst spreads I've ever seen. That was worse than my mum's second wedding, where the uh, caterers nearly got fired after the spread was unveiled. It was awful. <laughs> awful buffet. The worst buffet I've ever seen. Stale, stale volivons. That was a terrible spread. Oh, no. Oh, this is better. Look at that tight-knit pattern from Asilda's, um, <laughs> Asilda's rocket artillery. His MLRS is far more finely tuned. Oh, look because... how close that T-34 is to the mine in the middle. Oh, oh. oh my. I quite like Marmite as a spread HT. It has to be used in moderation, though. Some people slather it on. It's disgusting. Have a little bit of Marmite. It's okay. Same with black pudding. Anything that's weird and black has to be used in moderation when it comes to culinary measures. Con suffering there. Forced away. Um, but anyway, the whole point I'm trying to drive home to the you, dear viewer, and possibly Finn, although I'm sure he knows it already, is don't use rocket artillery without vision on what you're doing. It's... Yeah. It's... So simple. It's such a simple premise. You need to be able to see what you're doing before you fire, and uh, Asilda's doing that. It's not like it's big brain Asilda with his massive skills. It's it's kind of common sense, isn't it? 
Yeah, you, you're much better off waiting until you've got a decent target. Um, especially as, well, Asher should really know better than to clump up all of his units when he knows that there's a potential barrage to come along. Uh, we've maybe got the Professor of Destruction on the field, the Stern Panzer. Via Brumbear is making its way, ambling towards this conscript squad. Oh dear, oh dear. This won't end well. Ooh. It's a penetrating hit there on the Brumbar. Oh, C-34 has been hit by two pack shots in the east there. We've got a, a bit of a combat situation in the west with the veteran Panzer versus the T-34 there. No one's going near the Tala mines, and we do not have a sweeper on Ashablar's army. Meanwhile, the Panzer is firing on the combat engineers, possibly. I'm gonna oh, make no, it's here on the center, taking out a Dushka. And the Kazbot's fully destroyed. His logistics empire is crumbling before us. Katusha returns fire. Does he have line of sight this time? Uh, it's a tight-knit pattern anyway, but it's off the target, and uh, Isilda gets out of there. I'd, I'd like to see Asher trying to target the the rocket artillery of, of Visildor with his, with his Katusha, because you can very easily take out a, a Panzerwerfer with, with a Katusha barrage, and vice versa. Well, if HT reckons it's over. Uh, you have to say with um, some of the the differences in execution on the offensive side of this game, it doesn't feel like Ashablor has what it takes to take out the Silda, but we're given the benefit of the doubt as uh, his units are spontaneously combusting. It must no have been something the AT ever. Oh god. At least the tripwire flare went off so Ashablar can watch the remnants of his MG. Brumbear here takes out the other MG and the Ziskum's return fire. And ouch. Yeah, Asher just hasn't been able to deploy his legendary aggression in this match. Maybe he's, he's got a bit of the psychologicals against this other and is not, not confident enough to deploy that sort of... Crazy well, let's do what Orange deploy. Pest did in that game one. You know, yeah. throw some caution to the winds. Go a bit crazy. Oh, baby, baby. Such my body. Right, here we go. And oh. that's beautiful. Look at that. That was a lovely predicted barrage as well. The, the AT guns were moving when they... When the <laughs> oh, my God. Fired. Oh, God. There we go. Imperial Dane directed the script for this one. Wehrmacht are just dominating today on Crossroads. They are indeed. Brumbar in a bit of trouble, Oh, though. taking out of control as the Stuka comes down from the sky above, taking out the Brumbear there. It's beautiful panoramic scenery. A straight in win the build as well. Another, yeah. Straight in the build as well. Another Brumbar on the way. <laughs> got fuel to burn. <laughs> Von Ivan says, someone stop Izzy. We do need, Von Ivan, we need your level of aggression. We need to somehow take Von Ivan's aggression and infuse it with uh, any other player's preservation. Could be anybody. And we could have somebody take down a Silda. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Von Ivan, I mean, we're missing your streams, man. I still does it, I think. I think he's been streaming. Uh, now and again. Now and again. Oh, by the way, if you ever see one of these here, if it's got a health bar, that means it'll block a shot. If it doesn't, it won't. It's uh, Schrodinger's T17. Sometimes the model disappears, but the health bar remains. And in which case, it can still block a shot. Uh, yes. So we get phantom blocking. <laughs> yes, you do. It's because there's a... The, the, it's like a... It's not necessarily the same thing, the actual carcass and the... Uh, spri the you know, the actual fr frame wire shot blocker. Sometimes they separate. <laughs> I hope Co 3 is as zany as Co 2. I really do. I think, I'm pretty sure it will be. Good! If anything, they'll be more zany because there'll be more things to, to work out. 77 victory points, ticking down to zero. In some ways, I hope that uh, Code 3 does have as many 
quirks as, as Co2 because there's been so many fun stories about ridiculous things that have happened in this game over the years. Oh, we've got a big engagement happening in the west. Brumbear goes in. Here comes the multiple things happening. It's the Panzerwerf and the Katusha returning fire on the packs. Missing wildly. T-34 can't claim anything here. Pax though, struggling. Pax returning fire. T-34 still alive. Katusha doesn't finish any of them off. And he's still bleeding out on VPs. Only 46 remaining and three free capped VPs. What's Silda doing? He's had a moment. He lost a Gren there. I think he had a bit of lag or something. He, he stopped controlling his army momentarily. Will Asher be able to take advantage? A one-man conscript goes forth like a mad bastard and nearly dies because of it. Sis turning fire. He comes to Sturmovix. Taking out a Panzer. A Silda had a bit of Deus Ex Machina there. It seemed like something from the gods took his hand away from his mouse. He was not able to control his army. Airborne gods emerged from the garrison. I swear we he had a this was over, but it something. seems like it's still a game. It must have been. Did, did it look like to you that he didn't do anything for about 10, 20 seconds? Yeah, I'm, it could have been. I mean, who knows? It could have just been brain fog. Sometimes you get it when there are a lot of things going on. You, you end up trying to do everything at once and end up. Maybe doing he has a cat. He could have a cat. <laughs> Yes. The cat could have gone on the... Everyone knows that can happen. A cat... A domestic cat can strike any time when you're PC gaming. It, it's, uh, it's one of those things. Nothing worse than a cat jumping on your lap, all its claws out, when you're in mid-game. Well, it's not game on, because he's only got 30 victory points, but... T-34, it's a mine! <laughs> There's a teller there as well! <laughs> oh my god! There's so many... <laughs> There's still two to detonate as well. That's the fun thing. I, mean, I think that's the first show that, that Ash has had that there's Tellers on the field. And he still doesn't have a sweeper. No. Well, yeah. His manpower starved as well. He's just got that guard squad, which isn't going to help his manpower economy. Katusha's going very far forward there. Keeps one victory point, but there's another one being capped in the centre. I almost Vexus feel like it'd be better to conserve your energy here and, and, and call the game, but we saw what happened with Isildur against Orange Pest, and what we thought was a one game for Orange Pest ended up as a one game for Isildur, so it should really stay in until the last moments. It certainly should. Gren's MG holding the line. Katusha's going to beat them. That won't end well for the MG. He's got line of sight this time, so no excuse for the Katusha, and finally Ooh. they take something out. Panzer IV is in a spot of bother. The Zisk guns are lining up. But uh, look at this in the centre. The Brumbear's sitting there like the fat controller. <laughs> yes, indeed. But it's Penis of Doom. <laughs> Chode of Doom. The Chode of Doom, you went there. <laughs> I've been That's trying to make the stream more PC friendly, but it's good to have. Oh, sorry, no, sorry. no, no, it's good. It's good because. Uh, you know, we're not going to get any sponsorships anyway, so stuff it. It's fine. You sure Raid Shadow Legends isn't going to try? I refuse to be sponsored by people that take advantage of addicts. Although I have been sponsored by them in the past. <laughs> well, the <laughs> there we go, Brumbear taken out for a second time. He's got an MG watching on as the conscripts valiantly try to take the central victory point. This could go from being a meme cast to being an epic cast if Ashabor can somehow rescue this game, but alas, he cannot. 1,200 rounds per minute of Hitler's fury from this machine in Gewehr. He's trying to cap. He's got 10 remaining. Somehow, he's popped out of pin. Now he's back on pin. How did he go from pin to suppress? I've never seen that before. Maybe he was never pin. Indeed, pinned. reloading. It's just, just enough. Oh, was with the that all it cover. was? I think so, yeah. Ooh, oh. an LAB threatens. The clock's Imagine. been stopped for now on 9 VPs, but... Ooh, Grenzer in Terminator mode here. And they're retreating through artillery fire. Ooh. That um, is the luckiest conscript alive. I'm sure his psychologist doesn't consider him lucky. <laughs> oh, the psychologist has got a lot to work out. Oh, exactly. He's going to get loads of income from it. Exactly. Loads of hours there. That's how they see the world, probably. And how do you feel about being shelled? <laughs> <laughs> and what do you think shelling says about your parents' relationship with you? <laughs> 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 oh, 
Right, the tick's back on. Eight seconds remaining. <laughs> That's it, Zarok. Call my therapist. Tell him he's rich. <laughs> oh, God. I just got one more chance at this. Doesn't look like a good chance. No. I think he can neutralize it before it hits zero. But only if the men stay alive. Stay alive, men. You're doing great work. Oh, that's a oh no! Oh, it's behind them on the Ziskuns. There it is. It's always where you least expect it to be. Meanwhile, Panzerfall goes into the east. This is a fresh Panzerfall from the Rhine Metal factory. They're probably made there. Oh, there we go. Tick down because he neutralized this victory point here. Meaning, uh, Isilda is 1 0 up. Who could have predicted such a course of events? I certainly couldn't have done. Neither it's nice seeing some upsets against Asher, the reigning champ, isn't it? It is indeed. <laughs> yeah. He's the best Korean player currently active in the world. He is. Well, well played. The inconquerable, the insurmountable, indomitable Isilda in the south is now, you guessed it, 1-0 up in this best of three series as the uh, scoreboards update. They're, they are uh, retro digital Casio scoreboards. They take a while at times. Um, Findeed, what do you want to see from Ashablaw this time? What can he do differently? I want to see Ashablaw go balls to the walls with something crazy and very aggressive, and that's what he does best. I'd love to see him break Isildur's back early on and try and get into a third game where he's got another chance to win this series and, and earn his first place in the qualifying tournaments. So he's, he's got to put his balls on the wall. Is his Asher balls to the wall, yeah. Asher balls. We need to see some Asher balls in this game, basically. Yeah. And um, and yeah, yeah. I think it's a good, it's a good way of looking at things. All right, Isilda is going for the west side, seemingly with his combat engineer conscript start. He did actually get a second combat engineer. The, the first one's been busy wiring stuff off, and then gets straight into the fuel point. Finishes it off whilst moving, almost fantastic. Now he manages it. Maybe seeing almost certainly a sandbag in the middle, maybe. Yeah, there we go. Oh, what a sandbag it is, Findy. Let's hype cast it. Pass the duchy on the left hand side. <laughs> I love and that they, make... they they managed to basically they're just passing the sandbags from one end to the other. They're not actually yeah. putting them down. Should end up with a really tall sandbag here. Yeah, exactly. Actually, make it more of a flight risk. And then they should lower it onto the field. That would make more sense. So, uh, I think I'm going to write an angry letter to Relic. Dear Relic Entertainment, etc. If you if you read the historical manuals, you'll find that the Soviets actually. Well, it's funny that because they do have a voice line that alludes to that. Um, it's not actually possible to shoot a Panzer Shrek inside a building. Don't read the fucking manual so closely next time. And that's because <laughs> historical um, kind of people obviously pointed that out to them. And they they were like, dude, we don't care. We're just making a game. Yeah, we're just making a game. We're making money. <laughs> that's a license to print money, to, uh, Company of Heroes is. Best R World War II RTS of all time, easily. I think the uh, best RTS of all time anyway. Definitely come here as one for its time. It came out in 2006. Uh, Curious 2 has become a superior multiplayer experience thanks to the community synergy with the developer over the last four years. Certainly has. We've made this game. We can take all the credit. You know, I think no so. No shame in doing that. I certainly think so. This new heavy cover is being used to absolutely demolish the advance through here. I think uh no to white flash. I'm not so sure. I think that's a bit too big. It's not working how we intended it to work. 
Yes. It's... <laughs> it's working against its, its intended it's the, use here. Oh, it's meant to stop this being too dominated, but I've just realised it now stops the flanking route here. Okay. Well, we've got three more qualification events before the big tournament, so it's good to find these things out four weeks late. Yeah, so that, does that mean that we're going to carry on? We're going to carry on seeing map changes throughout the, the tournaments? I think we should have one more bevy of small map changes. Spe to Mill Road, that trench, some people are, are not completely happy with. I don't think that's a bit that needs changing. Uh, just a couple of little things we're spotting, but overall the improvements do seem to be net positive. They do indeed. It's sort of showing how Asher should have done it last time. He's got double fuel now. And uh, two VPs from, from right at the early go. And he's nice. got sandbags in strategic positions, which is exactly what you want to do with Soviets. I'm having uh, Vietnam flashbacks here because a Silda from South Crossroads is amazing to watch. Uh, it's not, it, doesn't, it doesn't take much to beat AE. He's not very good at the game, to be quite frank, especially compared to any of these mighty competitors. But Isilda once beat me armed only with combat engineers on this very map. Twice in a row. So the first time I got to experience it and react to it, and the second time I said, do the same again and see if I can stop you. Alas, I could not. He is oh, that wow. good at working out the timings of the sight blockers, the cover, and it's it honestly feels like you're swimming against a riptide fighting Isilda's mighty army. As indeed, and as, as someone that's faced him a few times in auto match and maybe a tournament or two, it's, it's very much like that for the rest of us as well. A lot of the time, <laughs> just on a different level, I'm sure. Yeah, for me, I'm like a rubber duck that gets uh, taken away. At least you're like Michael Phelps sw swimming against the tide. You stand a small <laughs> chance. Very small chance, yeah. As um, as Borobad, you like to say, he's just built different. In in, in the italics, that is. Oh yeah. In a, but uh, it's all those famous M5 coming out. He's not changing his build one one iota because he knows that no one seems to be able to beat it. So so why why innovate when it's already great? Oh yeah, why innovate? He's already done that. He kind of brought this out to great effect a few tournaments ago and won probably. And uh, and here he comes again. The uh, quad mount, the kraut mower. On its way, yeah, the M17 now. It changes its designation from an M5 to an M17, apparently. The Americans had a great system. There's about four kinds of M1. Uh -huh. <laughs> Everything's got an M, and is it military unit one? I don't yes, know, what does the M stand for? Is it, is it military or...? Probably. I'll tell you who does it better, the Air Force. It's all fighter and bomber, F and B. It makes so much more sense. At least they have a system. Yeah, far more comprehensible. It certainly bloody is. Right, these conscripts are in a spot of bother. Self-rifle need on himself. They're 25% of friendly fire damage incurred. 2 to twos on the hunt. Asherblas holding the line thus far. Though he's having a much better showing of things with Wehrmacht. It must be said, I actually think Wehrmacht's his strongest faction by a good margin. I've seen Asherblas do very well. I wonder if he's got any Tiger Doctrines today. He's got Jaeger... He's got Ostroop, and we're not going to see them anymore. And Spearhead. He does Spearhead. have a Tiger Doctrine available. Um, I, very good. Go on. I think the Spearhead Doctrine is probably his, his best option here. I mean, if, if he's not going to go balls to the wall aggressive um, with the, the Jaeger Infantry Doctrine, then I'd like to see him utilize the reconnaissance and maybe even the Mortar Half Trap to dislodge Isildur from his defensive positions. Those fragmentation bombs as well are excellent counters to grouped up AT guns, which we know we're going to see some AT guns from Mistletoe, most likely too. Oh, a little burst of flames there as they get in. Getting... That's like uh, many people's experience with their first girlfriend. <laughs> the sector has been cut off. Burst of flame and then just misery, right? Uh, yeah, that's what I was referring to. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> They are the flames of romance. Indeed, it's nearly February the 14th after all. Maybe we'll see a bit of a Valentine's Massacre in one of these tournaments. Grenadiers advance and the conscripts are forced away there. Back in the centre as soldiers fighting over a neutral victory point. 
We're seeing a concerted effort in the north and a, and a harassing force down south, but they've hit a hit a mine. And likely be forced off by the. Ah, the planting another mine as well. They could have planted that on the retreat path. Actually, that would have been funny. Oh, some of my some of the best moments are when you see somebody cheekily planting S mines in the retreat path of a, of a whole bunch of conscripts. <laughs> Right, what's this now? Ashblar with the mortar half track. Interesting. So he has chosen Spearhead. Come on, Ashablar! Everyone in chat, give Ashablar your energy. I know that there may be some um, Isilda fans. I'm sure there are. And, and everyone likes Isilda, but we also like underdogs. We like upset victories. We want to see the mightiest South Korean active in the world today somehow claw his way back into this game and pull defeat from the f um, the flames and turn it into victory. Managed to make that analogy work, even though I got the wrong way around. You did, there. you did. That was very impressive. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's all right. It's okay. I'm tired myself out, though, Finley. Take over casting. Okay. Um, we're seeing conscripts move through this small gap in the hedgerow, moving in, trying to force the mortar half drag, maybe to get an 18 aid off. Force the repairs. Does he get it off? He does. Oh, no, it's just a mortar. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> the M5 is backing up, so no chance of wipes on retreat. But this one half track already getting two kills, and it'll be excellent against the the uh, the MG gun, uh, the Dushka in the centre. Has he delayed his uh, Panzer IV too much for this 30 fuel investment? So uh, still he not got Battle Phase two quite yet. I don't know. If he gets two packs, he should be fine. But. Yeah, it's an yeah. interesting build order. Four Grens. He's, he likes his four Grens, does our Asher. Yes, he does. It does give him a lot of mobile flexibility to sort of push in all, all sectors. Is You generally want to have your Grens doubled up. Gives him a lot of utility. Let's see how the Water Half Track deals against the, uh, the Dishka in the centre there. And MG off, MG in the house doing well, and we're on about the uh, mortar half track coming in to help out. Certainly does that just around now. Meanwhile, in the north, 222 against conscripts, and combat engineers watching on. They unveil the pack. The territory is out of contact. Oh, combat engineers momentarily low there. Grenz could have finished that off. Mortar was yeah, way maybe too a missed late. opportunity for that for, for Asher. Might be good to see some uh, medical packs for the full model Grand Squad in the north. Oh, that was an advanced mine by a Silder there. It's, it's a good job it hit Pioneers, not Grenadiers, though. He has something to be thankful of. All quiet on the uh, western front. Everyone in chat, we want to hear how you're watching today's games. If you've got an interesting scenario, I'd be sitting at my computer in my office room in my house. That's pretty boring. But if you're doing something more exotic, if you're watching it with somebody, maybe a child or a loved one or a grandparent that served in World War II, you could be watching from a jacuzzi or from space. We want to hear about it. Let us know. Yeah, I do love watching a bit of Co2 in my uh, Virgin Atlantic. Virgin yes. Space, whatever that thing is called. <laughs> this rocket ship. <laughs> from house. Oh, from his own house. Zarok owns a house, everybody. Wow. Get this yeah. guy. He's showing off, isn't he? No one likes he to is. show off Zarok. No. <laughs> from the Alps. That's pretty cool, Apache. Maybe you're an Apache as well. On mobile in a traffic jam. I've been there, Johnny. It is illegal, but I've done it. I once watched Helping Hands versus Von Ivan stream a battle for third place in GCS 1, and Helping Hands got a migraine, and I have to admit, I had a bit of schadenfreude, and I was laughing because he was going, Ah, oh, my eye! Constantly, and, and I wasn't watching the stream, but I was listening to it in my car driving home from a meeting with ESL in Leicester. And, and Helping Hands kept going, Ah, oh, my heart, I've got a migraine! And I was laughing so hard, I was veering out of the lane on the motorway. <laughs> it was really dangerous, actually. That would be an interesting explanation in court. I know, it was very dangerous. I wasn't watching it, though, on my tad. I was just listening. 
was this thing completely here, illegal. Yeah. I've always all been there, very bored in the car. Oh, MG's in peril there, and the Conscripts push in. We've got a good attack formulating. This is Isilda trying to turn on the heat because we've had, we've gone through the Izzel door, and we're now in his house where he uses his micro mechanical aggression to overwhelm his opponents. And look at the pushes coming in from the flanks. Our lines of supply are disrupted. Yes, indeed, pushes up an MG. The uh, famous M5 moving in to suppress the Grands. Going to try and force this opening to stay open. At rotating from centre to try and deal with that. What would be a Silder's bane? If we were to use Lord of, Lord of the Rings uh, reference. Oh, his uh, his famous sword. Oh, so, so can we um, instead call the M17 his bane? Is oh, it? Yes, yeah. indeed, it was the Silder's bane. That's right, because Aragorn yeah, gets yeah. it, doesn't he? So that's the M17. This is a Silder's bane. His Silver scimitar bane. of destruction. His great sword that he uses to kill people and stuff. <laughs> Moving north now, or well, this would be east, east north. Going to try and put some pressure on the fuel point. The the VP. Rasha moving his uh, two two two, oh. and Caesar's coming. What's the sword's name then? Come on, where are the Lord of the Rings fans out there? Norzil, that's better, Theodosios. A name like Theodosios is definitely going to give us the correct name. It's Norzil, thank you. The ring must be his bane, because bane's bad, right? Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you're right, because he, he kept the ring, didn't he? Yeah, that was his bane. Norzil. That's some deep Lord of the Rings lore there. I think I've gone too deep. We dug too deep. <laughs> <laughs> the P4 comes out, that can be the Balrog. Yes, indeed. <laughs> right, here Sherman, comes now. Sherman, indeed. That's right, Big Tino. Isildur's all about the methodology of destruction. He is the most. He's an engineer by trade, and I think it shows in his play. He's engineered the perfect playstyle to uh, slowly suffocate opponents, like an anaconda suffocating a, a stolen child from the local village. Isilda is absolutely merciless. Yeah, Asher fighting for breath now against what is an aggressive push from Isildur. Utilising all the tools at his disposal. In the north, here we go, he goes in, Dorsil! With a scimitar-like attack, taking out the mortar half-track. And we've got a push in in the, the east that was distracting him. Yeah, except he's going full in though. He's going for the 222 as well with a it. damaged engine. Can he do the work? He's got a reloaded salvo. And no, he can't. 222 actually claims the victory. Oh wow. Got greedy. Seems like a strange attack from, from this other there. I, I don't think, think he was thought... quite ready to, to go in with the other units and he mistimed that in a rare display. Did he just. Okay. I thought he nearly crushed the house with his own unit inside. That would have been hilarious. Very close to dying now, though. Um, what were we saying? Oh yeah, my 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 take on that is I don't think he thought he would escape anyway, so he thought might as well sacrifice it. It's uh, already paid for itself, perhaps. Uh, no, it hadn't. It was versus mortar half track. You just had a bit of a brain fart, I guess. A mortar half track is a, is an annoying unit to, to go up against. So maybe it was just. The value for him, not maybe in terms of resources, but in terms of micro effort and, ah, and avoiding I really it. Doubt, ah, I really doubt that, mate. The suppressive qualities of the M17 in the long run is more than worth it. By the way, Minesweeper comes in and spots one of those pesky Asilda mines. Ah, oh, that's a good question by Big Dino. Finn, did you ever find yourself using the reload option that was that meant to raise the skill ceiling of pro players? No. <laughs> um, <laughs> No, I, I think it's been so, you know, playing this game so long that a new feature like that has just, especially one that's, that's not massively impactful on play, it's just passed me by. The, the changes to the MGs, um, uh, what is it, the, the formation has been so pivotal in the way that the, the unit works that it's not been needed. Because what happened was you, you'd have a unit go into an MG, snipe the mod at the front, and then because they're reloading, you lose the MG. Because those units are in the front now, you never need to worry too much whether it's reloaded or not. 
Um, can we just say, by the way, the big news is that we are currently 390 to 400 victory points. And this game has so far to go. Uh, Ashablar is having an absolutely fantastic one. And I've got to say, uh, Findeed, that after this next engagement, I'm going to have to call a break so I can refuel as a caster. And it will be worth it, ladies and gentlemen. But I feel like we've got a 55-minute game on the go. And I'm going to need a quick beverage break and, and also another kind of break. So there we go. There's our... If you ask for my mother's maiden name next, Big Dino, I'm going to be a little concerned. <laughs> <laughs> Big Dino is an alpha male, and he's a very nice guy as well. So he's, he's uh, an interesting cat. He's got some interesting stories to tell. I'm sure he'll make many friends in this community, to be honest. All right, then. We're 19 minutes in. A's had a Stuka refueling, and he's ready to go. Ready to strafe this cast and uh, hopefully keep it going. Keep it going indeed. I was just saying that I think Ash is in with a really, really good chance of winning this. He's, he's up on population. He's in a great position. He's got the unit composition. He's not really lost anything. What do you think? I think that's why I'm excited. Because I know it's going to be a struggle, but I know he's got the possibility to win. And I want to be able to cast and commentate on it with all my energy. So I just had a banana and, uh, you could probably guess, a functioning alcoholic swig of whiskey. Here comes an LAB on... It's a fragmentation bomb to Ooh. nothing. Ashablar wasted that, but he was in the middle of a push, so you can't blame the chap. He's used it as cover to move in now for a possible kill. He's also got a Grenadier covering that flanking path there. Grens go forward for some reason. Meanwhile, Panzerfall meets up. He's got more Grens, don't forget. He built four of the buggers. The packs are in position. The MGs too. The Pioneers pushing up from the other side. This is looking great for Asher. It is indeed. This will do lost a, an engineer squad, I believe, to recurring a pack, which he's now lost again. But a Gren squad goes down for Asher in the middle. Double so Gren now, though. He's got a double LMG Grenadier. Definitely so he's just converted it. two Grenadiers into an <laughs> omnipotent force. Did I just take a break a second before the game finishes? That would be hilarious. <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> <laughs> Discord forces away the 2-2-2. Sherman watches on. We've got a huge push in from Asher Blah. The Zisk gun is going to get destroyed from afar. Has he got line of sight on it? Can the combat engineers get there? Oh no, pass on the Sherman from behind as well. Oh, we got there. Meanwhile, Ooh. the Sherman's able to force away the Grendy. Isolde is surviving, but it is only that surviving. The Sherman's got to be really careful how he shows and exposes his rear. Oh no! What a oh. shot by Asher! And he throws in the towel! It was the worst moment to take a break in human recorded history. No one thought that Asher Blah had what it took to take Isolde out in such comprehensive fashion in 22 minutes. But the mad bastard's gone and done it! The, yeah, the most one concerted push through the center, one well-timed and, and aggressive push, and he's he's won the game. He's got himself a third game and a potential shot at the tournament place. Well, I have been proven to be an absolute moron. I thought that was going to be in for a 55-minute classic. I had to refuel, and uh, it turned out to be a majestic push by Eshablar. Really well played by the guy. Um, the Of course, the fragmentation... Go on, Findy, talk us through what you saw happen. Okay, so um, Asher Blaws, I don't know how to say his name, Asher came in from the centre, he set himself up nicely with the double MGs covering, uh, covering each other, with the AT gun and the vision from the 222, he sent in the, uh, the fragmentation bomb, which I'm, I'm sure he hoped got kills, but what it did also is force the AT guns to reposition, it forced him to move his units, it forced the micro attacks on Isildur, and whilst that was happening he moved in with all of his units and quite frankly just got kills. Uh, forcing the <laughs> forcing the issue and, and winning the game. Well, egg on my face. I really didn't expect that to happen. But massive hype going into game three on Amelie Fields. It's Silda versus Ashaplar. It's it's all of a sudden the game is on. Well played to the South Korean as we head into the deciding ace game.
And here we are. Oh no, God, yes. It's Amelie Fields. It's effing beautiful to see. And there it is in all of its beauty. It's Amelie Fields Autumn, the ML edition. Oh, did I say ML? I did indeed. The Master League edition. And unlike what I thought, we're much sooner into this deciding ace game than I anticipated. I did not think our southern player playing as Vermat, Ashablaw, had it in him to finish the game off that quickly. Findy, did that take you by surprise? It very much did. I thought we were in for a long game there. Both players were going to sort of set up and, and feel each other out a little more, but Asher just clinched it right right after you came back from your break and, and smashed this all door and made him look like a bit of a noob, to be honest. I know it's 1 1, guys, in chat. I was just trying to find a moment, and that's why I asked Findeed what he thought. Ah, oh, ye of little faith. I mean, it may have been that I could have done that in the 20 minute interval, but that's not how I roll, baby. <laughs> That's for talking to <laughs> Findeed about mindless rubbish. <laughs> you know, why prepare for the cast in front of 400 people and eventually 20,000 people on YouTube when you can just talk rubbish with your friend? It's much more fun. <laughs> exactly. Do you know what this this ML in the, in the middle here from, from um, White Flash reminds me of? Yes. Reminds me of a recent story where a surgeon was putting his initials onto organs he transplanted into patients. And he got yes. found out. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is, isn't it? It's great. And I'm going to leave a scalpel in um, in my next cadaver because this is uh, a fantastic time for the community. We're really putting our mark down on Cody Heroes 2. We've made it a different game, quite frankly, um, Findeed. We, with we, the, we with, have. With Tawny Mode and Mirage Flower in particular helping finish off what Woof and I started, uh, we've really got a well-polished, you know, mod that changes the, the worst RNG factors of Co2, and now we're changing the best auto match maps to be even more tournament viable. And we're just we've got a great little glory period for coming here as too. Let's get into the tactics and strategies of this game as it unfolds. How are we seeing it, Findeed? Well, we're seeing a uh, really good, interesting. Uh decision from Asher to group up his Grens early and use that long-range firepower to force uh, one of Isildur's conscripts back to base already on, on one man at very low health, carving himself some space out in this game. But we're seeing a, a mid-range trade here that's actually going in favour of Isildur. Maybe Asher needs to change up his tactics now and, and move away. Oh, God, this guy's low on health. What is he thinking? He's slowly retreating, but now he's got so little. One shot will do it, guys. One shot will all it take to end Ashablar's hopes and dreams of being the first qualifier for the World Championships in 2022. Is it 2022? Am I that old? This, this is where we are. Yeah, yeah. Bloody 2022. Hell. I know it feels like with COVID that we've just missed a year, missed a year and a half, but time keeps marching on. Certainly bloody does. Look how little health that guy had. Oh, he's just had a comrade join him, but it still looks like one man. He had so little health. Anyway, flamethrower erupts and is forced back. So good work by Asher there to defend himself. And most importantly, keep this fuel in the east because that means 2-2-2 two, two, two timing is going to be right on time. <laughs> it is indeed. And we're seeing actually Asher come out on top of that that fight, that engagement, and um, pretty much every single unit of, of Isildur has had to go back to base for reinforcement and healing. be interesting to see if Isildur, having lost the last game, will, will innovate and change his tactics. So we've already seen a different command choice from Isildur. Maybe we'll see some guards and maybe a bit of 120 action. Um, there we go, guys. That's actually the old tawny mode. My bad. Um, Storm Panther, will you find the guys the link to the new tawny mode version 2? I did actually have a command that shows it, but I've just realised it's the old one. The new one's better because it um, still has out of controls, but the um, tanks can't shoot when they're out of control. So you get to see the cool animation, but you don't get any of the um, sponsors, please mute, any of the rampant bullshit whilst the out of control occurs, aka zombie kills on tanks. It's a welcome relief for us. <laughs> for us players as yeah. they shake as they touch their mouse and keyboard <laughs> oh, not again <laughs> not again <laughs> right oh god hope we're not triggering anybody in chat but uh, 
Humor is it's its best when it's bleakest and darkest, and that's why we are uh, we're against political correctness where it counts, as long as you can be funny and not punch downwards. We're happy. Rifle laden on the conscripts. Ooh. Ouch! Just about dodged there by Izzy. It was a dodge, wasn't it? He moved to the left. He shimmied to the right, rather. And, uh, yeah, it kept the squad alive, because that could have been bad. Could have been bad. I and mean, we're actually seeing a real lack of healing here from Asher, and he's, he's, he's struggling with that four-man grin squad on about 25% health. <sighs> Disacquire healing and acquire 2-2-2 two, two, two timing, I guess, because it's going to be out very soon. Enemy is taking our territory. It is indeed. We're going to see a... An M5 or a T70 this time. Mm. He's had such good fortune against Nagano with an M17 on this very map. I would be surprised if we saw anything else. And I think it, the M17 is now very competitive with the T70 in terms of overall DPS per minute. If it was the old T70, the, uh, the drum of destruction on retreat paths just mopping up Grenadiers, um, it would be different, but it's not. It's the old reliable T70 that you can never kill. Oh god, that thing was awesome. It yeah. made me feel good at coming here is when I got a T70 out early. Oh yeah. And there was a grenadier. Oh, you're capping my fuel in the far edge of the map. <laughs> Let's take a stroll back to your base with the T70. <laughs> oh, you're dead. It's such a shame. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the Mafia used that as a, as a, as a threat. Wouldn't it be a shame if your family were chased home by a T-70? <laughs> I'm seeing like a T-70 like a neighbourhood dog now, chasing a fat child back to its house. <laughs> oh, but now the T-70 is a toothless old dog and it's replaced with the M-70. He's gone for a T-70, everybody! Oh, thank God. Oh, we've, we'll prove us wrong now. I'll prove that it's just as good as it used to be. Best T-70 of all time. He's managed yeah. to unpatch it. It's gone back to how it used to be. Oh look, this uh, this Grundy is having a little meal, having a picnic out. <laughs> oh, one of them's died. It must have had something bad. <laughs> it's off. <laughs> oh dear. Ooh, two to twos. Going to harass the conscripts on retreat. He said he's coming to meet it. I tell you, for all our merriment, having fun casting this game, um, Findeed, Asherblar has been working his ass off out there. He's now got the Jaeger squad out, and he's got five infantry really putting the hurt down on Asilda. It's all eyes on this T-70 to see how much mass map, res map control it can rescue. Sprinting in sideways like a mad crab. He's going in for the Faust and can't get it. Unfortunately not. And he takes a few model losses for his, for his efforts. But Asher being cautious, keeping his friends around, even though he might want to retreat them just in case the T-70 dives and he needs to Faust. But is he, is he going to work the flanks now with his T-70, trying to, trying to wrestle back some map control, like, like you said? Is Izzy, indeed. The T-70 comes in, going on one of those little journeys with the pioneers. As we mentioned earlier, it doesn't quite have the lethality it used to have. Meanwhile, in the west, combat engineers pushing away the grenadiers and getting a rare Mosin Nagant combat engineer kill. Yes, indeed, and, and, and Ash is still suffering from his lack of healing, which he doesn't have the manpower for the bunker right now, and he's he's still stacking up losses. Gone for a, uh, a pack 43 instead. Pack, no. What's this pack called? Pack 40. 40. Yes. Some four number. Indeed, now you're starting to understand how tiring casting can be on the brain. Oh, yes. <laughs> Talking, it's easy, right? Not, <laughs> not when you're us. All right, guards are out for Isilda. And that's why I drink copious amounts of whiskey when I cast. It's... No, I don't. I've only had a small amount. We all know the A tradition. It's whiskey in the first half of a long casting screen. And caffeine in the... the uh, I meant caffeine in the first half, whiskey in the second. Well, whatever, whatever your tipple is, it's, it's helping. Uh, it certainly does. It certainly does. Keeps your energy up. Pack 40 pushing up with the 222. And I say, yeah, here comes that rescuing of the map control. The guards are out as well. Guards and T70. Do they counter an extra Grenadier and a Jaeger squad in terms of able to 
exert pressure on your opponents. It certainly seems that way. It does, it does indeed. The T70 will go in front of the pack and that'll maybe... Oh, no, misses. This is a tricky spot now for Asher. Just 80 guns vulnerable. That Jaeger squad just shredding units. Yeah, he's having a good day. Only got three kills so far, but the pressure he's exerting is rather remarkable. T70 spots a weakness, pushes in where the pack is not. That's what a Silver will do to you all day, thanks to superior macro. Meanwhile, in the east, he's also taking the standard territory points away. Clever. T70 takes a shot for its efforts. Will immediately be repaired then. Asher Blore has not yet teched Battle Phase 2, so this 128 fuel is more like 20, because he has to tech that before he can get a Panzer IV. Indeed, 105 fuel to go up to the next stage. Makes his stockpile look actually rather small. An 18A gets oh, up on the 2 nice on the 2 Takes it out around the side of the bushes there. Well played by the conscripts of Isilda. That's not what Ashablaw needed. Certainly not. Sneaky, sneaky. Well said, doggy. It was indeed. But it just shows how you've got to really stay alert against players that are just looking for any opportunity to put hurt on you. And as I say, with Isilda's superior perception, with his excellent attack map usage, he does spot these little openings. Uh, very quickly. It just gives him... hes It's like watching a strobe light, isn't it, when you watch a stream, uh, Findy. He so flutters in and out of tap map very quickly. Oh, Jaeger's caught off guard! He Ooh. should be okay. He should be okay. Yeah. Fast threatening. wonder if maybe that was bait for the for the telemine that's on the field there, just to show the point. I'm looking for it. I'm sure you can see it, but I cannot. Can you point out? It's it? it's so oh, just uh, to to the left of the well. Okay, so to the to the right of the fuel point, near the convergence of the fences. That's a beautiful description. Let's watch this, Gren. Make sure he survives. It's the convergence of the fences. So it's here somewhere. He said it to, was to the here. right, to the right, to the right. Not. Yep. There it is. I oh, yeah. see it. I'm a big boy. You did well, indeed. <laughs> they are they are tough to spot. Even I struggle. I mean, something I've actually done before is is found a piece of ground that looks a little bit like a telemine and put put one there in the hopes that even if they do get spotted by a minesweeper, the player themselves won't see it. Now I need a bit of sympathy in chat. I'm not actually blind, although I am. I do wear contact lenses. But uh, when you've been staring at a screen, you're on your sixth game of the day. Uh, things get a little bit blurred. Yeah, softens the edges do. of a telemine <laughs> in a in the patch there. Not the most high contrast of things. Anyway, oh Ashablaw has pushed himself back onto the map. He's got Grens ready to seek refuge behind. That's a slim slice of cover. I'm not sure it's cover at all. These conscripts don't think so. Hey, what's this cover you've got? Let me shoot you in the face. <laughs> Assault conscripts going in close. Are we going to win this? Yeah, they did. That was excellent gunfire tactics. Walk up to them and shoot them in the head. <laughs> I'm a simple man. <laughs> the, yeah, I, I think uh, Isildur is going to try to set himself up for a long, laborious match in, in the hopes that that's where I'll have the advantage with the 120mm mortar just pounding away. But... I'm imagining Asher is going to be opting for a, a more aggressive, shorter end. I can hear Short. something exploding a lot, indeed, and I do believe there's a 120 millimeter mortar on the field. There is. So it takes there is one, a very big mortar. It's it's one guy's very big mortar. Oh, and he's got a big mortar, and the other guys just stand around him, telling him what a big mortar he has. <laughs> and even if they all die, he'll still run away back to base with his big mortar. It's the law and legend. Of the 120 millimeter Russian, with his. Okay, we get the joke. <laughs> ah, bloody hell! T7 pushes in. Conscripts watch on. They do plant their sandbags. Guards are on the field. They've got seven kill DP light machine guns. And now Isilda's got the fuel back. 
Ashablar should never have gone back to base because this is what happens. Conscripts low, Grens through the fire. A forced to retreat, not worth it. Not worth it indeed. 30 manpower on each of those models. Uh, expensive assault units for the G43s. Could utilize the, uh, the smoke grenade here to, to avoid fire. Support armor core up in base. He's already got enough for an Osvind or a Stuk, but we know we're not going to see one of those lovely vehicles. We'll be a fans of four. It's safe and Oh, Talamine goes off. T70 out of control. Goodbye, oh. little light tank. Little pyramid of destruction. Fantastic pickup. We are suffering vehicle losses. By Asher. It's a brim full of Asher on a 45, and in this case, Asher's got many munitions available, abilities available to him. Sure, he's going to covet them. Now he's got G43s on nearly everything. It's going to be five G43 squads in total. That could be a mop-up crew if he plays his cards right. Yeah, get those on some retreating units behind, in, in behind, and that's almost guaranteed wipes. Could be. Could be some Paul AD tactics incoming. We need some demos yes. from Isilda, possibly. Oh, that could be good. We're seeing the Panzer IV almost hit the field here, and, and Isildur's not got anything to contest it other than the, the puny PTRSs on the guard squad. Oh, uh, synchronous, synchronized Molotov throwing is a new Olympic sport in the Russian <laughs> Olympic Winter Olympics as the conscripts are forced away by this G43 squad with its 21 infantry kills. Not too shabby. Uh, the conscript squad actually goes down in, in the, the battle over the North VP. Oh, crap. Okay. Yeah, I looked so... away for a moment, assuming Isilda would retreat, and he indeed did not. Nice pickup for Asher, who's on a rampage here. 16 minutes in, he's in control. Isilda's not seen that for a while. No, he's probably shocked at the idea that someone could even challenge him. Well, Asher's certainly doing that. He's going for the cutoff now. And while Isildur has a T-34-85 in the build, he doesn't have his his famous double AT guns to rely on. So he might struggle to push himself back onto the field here. Uh, Von Aston, right, uh, who's, by the way, one of the best players never to win a major tournament, um, rightfully identifies that the 120mm mortar was a mistake. And in this case, it certainly seems to be just that, because apparently it uh, didn't give him the manpower he needed at that particular point in time. Ashablar, of course, is a mobile fighting force with G43s. He's not going to be holding the line for too long at a time. So, uh, yeah, good call by Von Aston there. Flatzer says the squad wipers on stream. screen. I'll have to take your word for it. I, I don't know what's going on. Is this some kind of battle? <laughs> uh, hand me some more whiskey, please. Uh, bloody lovely stuff. Anyway, Panzer IV in the East versus Vet Three combat engineers, keeping them at bay. This is all Asher, a sea of red at the moment. Can Isilda be like the king of the Israelites and part the Red Sea? We'll have to wait and see. As this game rolls on. As indeed we saw we saw an Isildur win in what seemed like a one game against a lost game against um, Orange Pest earlier, utilizing just this very tank, the T thirty four eighty five. So we'll see despite the position of Isildur being somewhat dire at the moment, if he can bring this back and show just what a good player he is. But it's not looking likely so far with a. Uh, with an AT gun missing from his build. Soldiers trying to rescue back control. We've got a T-34 going stationary versus Grenz. Firing upon them but missing. Meanwhile in the West, Panzer IV forces away the conscripts. And one of these many G-43 squads. One. <laughs> two. Five in total. I won't do the full Sesame Street based joke. But uh, Ashablaw's in control. And now he's got access to a strafe. And his LAB. Indeed, he's got all the tools he needs now to clinch this game. I wonder if we'll see uh, another sort of 20 minute ish or 25 minute ish push to try and end the game early while he's got the advantage rather than dragging out a game that, let's face it, this one was very good <laughs> for a very long time. Whereas some of our more um, burn the candle at both ends players like Asher might not be struggling for a protracted game. Christmas was cancelled as that Panzer IV um, runs over the Christmas tree. We have Ju- Oh, what a crush there on the guard squad. T-34 
tell you what, these G43 Grands couldn't keep pace with the Panzer as it overstretches its supply lines. Familiar story, yeah. Yeah. Could have utilized Sprint there to try and get behind the, uh, the guard squad, but opts not to. Oh dear, what are my grenadiers hurting? Meanwhile, we did have a push away in the west with the T-34 having some good fun. Now it finds its Panzer IV prey, but the Pack 40 Dream Team is ready to answer that call. You need to be careful of the mortar, of course. G43 squad comes in from the flank of this conscript, keeping victory point control in South Korean hands. What a nice that a little grenade Ooh. there. That's a Model 24. Which, if you saw that on Tinder, it would probably be a bot. Oh, I get it. <laughs> Did you had a girlfriend for too long, uh, Findy? That joke yeah. was lost on you. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I had someone, um, I say someone, maybe probably a real human, message me uh, on WhatsApp um, saying, ask me to come to a meeting. And I said, oh, I think you've got the wrong person. And they said that our meeting was fate. And I thought, okay. <laughs> That's Sounds block. like a Batman villain, to be honest. I'm not so <laughs> sure about that. Oh, God. Oh, right, we've got a second Panzer IV coming on the field. It's the famous DevM algorithm that we discussed whilst casting. Do you have a Panzer IV? No. Do you have the resources for a Panzer IV? Yes. Build a Panzer IV. Uh, the do you have a Panzer IV clause is optional. Basically, it's bugged. And every time you have the resources for a Panzer IV, you just build another one. That's how them at top level works. Exactly. And if, if Hitler had utilised this advice in the war, he would have been he would have been sitting pretty in Europe. Who was it? Was it what was the name of the armaments minister? Was Albert Speer? That's right, isn't it? Um, basically, <laughs> about that piece of knowledge. It was. No, he was like the accountant, the evil accountant using slave labour. But he was still an accountant, and he was like saying, maybe we should just build stugs and Panzer IVs. And Hitler was like, yeah. no, make a battleship, but a tank. Yeah. <laughs> they the just started was... ignoring him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, this is the way that the the Americans won is that they just they had a Sherman. It was a crap tank, but they could produce them at such a rate that they just did, and they won. Indeed, T-34s as well. The British just had ten different types of crap tanks. Yeah, they did. Yeah, made from ten different <laughs> factories. These Stukas are sorry. These uh, Stovics are deafening. Yeah, away by G43 fire as the Panzer IV pushes in, and there we've got a squad wipe on the guards there. Picked up by these victorious 14 kill Jaegers. That's a real big loss for Isilda. He needed that squad to stay alive. He's down to two conscripts now and a combat engineer. It's not looking strong. It's looking like we may have our first qualifier, and it could be an underdog victory. It could be Ashablaw heading to the finals. He could indeed. It'd be great to see. Another T-34 building. Look at the strafe as well. Strafe coming in here. An LAB rather. My bad. I always I should look at the bloody things on the bottom of the screen. Help my casting go in. P4 almost hit a mine there, and that could have been dangerous. Sitting in front oh, yes. of an AT gun actually can see that one. Let's have a look at the tacticular map and see where a Sildes... Can everybody spot a Sildes on? Is it here? Is it here? Ah, it's all in base. Meanwhile, Ashablaw is spreading himself over the field. We do have a second T-34 emanating. And, uh... Isilda needs to do exactly what he did versus Orange Pest. Survive and thrive. Because Orange Pest had him against the ropes in a big way. The referee was ready to throw... To call it there and call it a technical knockout. It's indeed. And uh, somebody in chat mentioned that um, the odd if Asha Blows won the, uh, the EU the EU qualifier. And, and just to point out that it's actually 3 a.m. It's 3 in the morning for, for Asha Blows right now. So a night owl playing his best game against someone who's, you know, it's only 6 o'clock here in the, uh, Amazing. In the UK. Amazing. Oh my god. Everybody, I need the emote perma smug in chat. That's perma smug. Because we have a vehicle. A, a, a vehicle of such legendary proportions. 
Oh, that's right, everybody. Let's get... He's cancelled it, the bastard! Oh, no. You tease! <laughs> He's a stug teaser. He took us half the way there now. He's a stern shuts teaser. Didn't build the tank destroyer, yeah. Took us so long to find out. We found out. Ostwind, everybody. Uh, I think we should, the Captain Frog. I think we should. Conscripts being blocked in there. G43s could finish them off. Indeed, they do. Another squad wipe against the Silder. What army? No army. T34s are getting aggressive now. They have to do something. They've got prioritized vehicle in. They're going for a tank kill. As Silder is throwing this game. It's not going well for him at all. So we have prioritized vehicle is missing due to on the move accuracy. The other Panzer IV pushes in. We've got the packs calmly thudding away. Damaged engine on this one thanks to the Panzer Faust. Asilda throws in the towel seemingly. Waiting for the next qualifier because that made no sense whatsoever. It didn't indeed. And we're going to see an upset here. Something that we're not, we are not really weren't expecting considering Isildur's dominant position in pretty much every competitive play for the last year or so. Going down to Asher Blaws. Really consistent and aggressive playstyle here on, on the enemy fields. I think they're talking. I think Isilda is congratulating Asher Blaw, And indeed, he has thrown in the towel. That was a, a tap out there. He has lost. We have had a fantastic surprise underdog victory. Despite the odds by your South Korean warlord, Asher Blaw. GG, well played, sir. You've done fantastically today. You took us all by surprise. And what a victory it was. It was indeed. And it's a pleasure to see someone knocking the best player in the world currently off his pedestal and making him work hard. And we'll... Honestly, I'm amazed by that. I had resigned myself to yet another Isildur victory, this Michael Schumacher-esque figure of the early uh, the early 2000s kind of thing, just dominating the field. And, and me and Findeed, we, we're surprised as you about how well Ashabal played as Wehrmacht today. He was dominant. This four Grenadier build is, is, is so strong in his hands. It certainly is, and we're going to have to see Isildur maybe rethink his Soviet strategy. We, we saw him win his... Um win so often with this but it, as with all these things the time and tested strategy becomes meta and someone builds a, a counter build to it and you, and you have to change again so maybe we'll see Isildur coming up with some new strategies next time indeed yeah and we've got our second qualification tournament the one that was designed for Asia starting at 11 p.m. GMT do we have any Asian players left because we might change that to be honest we've got EK I did this to try and entice more Asian players to play. I might have to have a word because <laughs> we didn't actually get that many sign-ups and the best Asian players just bloody um, just won. So <laughs> there you go. 11am, Theodosios, 11am, sir. So we might actually have readdressed that. I might make it so it's not 11. Oh, it definitely should say am, by the way. Maybe that's why he thought he had to play now. <laughs> That's why. No wonder I put AM. Not thank you, Theodos, for spotting that. There we go. It's meant to be eleven AM, but to be honest, I think we should. I don't know. Change that. Feels a bit silly now, doesn't it? Yeah, honestly, I thought it was going to be eleven PM, <laughs> like it said on there, and I thought, oh well, I'm not going to play that. No, I'm not going to play that one. But oh, if it's I'm an idiot. I I just put AM instead of PM. It's it's, it's what happens when you uh, don't have proofreaders, I suppose. Maybe open for more signups. Orange Pest says, well. I don't know. We've got enough players, I think. Unless there's any dramatic late entrants that I really feel they could play. But given that... Mate, I did tell them that there'd be an Asian-friendly tournament. I'd love... It. If Asia Mint wanted to sign up, I'd let him play. I said the same to Dev M. We, we were trying to convince Relic to let De Dev M play uh, in Co2 community tournaments. But alas, it is against community... Uh, sorry, company principles. Um, so... 
Yeah, but it's yeah we've got enough players. If Asia Mint wanted so. to play, if somebody could contact him, we could get him in. I'd give him a like a, an entrance, a late entrance. I don't care. I know Zany, I know. I didn't know that Happy Cat was from Scotland. That's interesting. I thought no, he was from China, he was a... but he's studying in Scotland. Ah, okay. That makes the the time system work for him much better, doesn't it? It certainly bloody does. Yeah. Um, anyway, if you've been watching this today, I really hope you've had fun. I certainly bloody have, as does uh, Findeed, I believe. I've had lots and lots of fun. Thank you for, for tuning in and, and listening to me waffle on. Makes a change from just listening to me, that's for certain. So uh, we have had two new donators, I believe. Let me just check out what these notifications are. I think... Wow. Okay, so yeah, we've had... Uh... We've had a uh, Chrissy has joined the fold. So welcome everybody. Chrissy is now a, a backer. And we're going to host somebody. Let's see who, who wants a good hosting. Who wants a good hosting? Who should it be? Does anybody in chat want to play? Von Ivan perhaps? Anybody want to play and uh, get hosted? Got a surprising amount of viewers today. A real viewers as well. <laughs> Fantastic novelty. I'll do it. Go on, Von Ivan. Get in there, son. Make Go it happen. On. You'd never guess who won Injustice. It was just very surprising. Spoiler alert. So it's on screen. So just to clarify the, the wildcard stuff, so this means that Elpen will get a place in in the if next qualification he tournament. Wants it. He can't play in the next wildcard tournament, that's for certain. But he can now use his wildcard at any of these three events. Um... And as I say, I might change the start time of this one. I'll keep the NA one at 5 p.m. because I actually got that time right. But I did actually mean 11 a.m. for that one. I might just change that to 1 or something. Make it okay. 1. I don't know. We'll see. I might put a player poll together for Qualifier 2 in two weeks' time. So does that mean that the 16th seed currently on, on the list will get pushed out by Open? Yes. Whatever a wild card is used. And don't forget, Dutchman also has a wild card he can use at any time. Uh, when okay. they check in, they can they can check in with wildcard, and it means that they... Uh, so we've got two players, 19th and 21st seed, can elevate themselves to 12th or 13th seed if they both use it. Um, in any of these tournaments, it's wild. Wow. Ah, you don't like it. Uh, where <laughs> no, 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 I, no. I, I like it. I, I'm just thinking poor, um, poor Theo there in 16th position might, <laughs> might get uh, pushed out. No, Ash is not playing anymore. Oh, that's true. So it'll be Happy Cat. Let's call him Gold. He is gold. Oh. oh, that's it. Always believe in your soul. Indeed. So we've got Ashablar is our victor. Let's call him Gold here too. And Isildur's going to still be in the brackets, getting that vital practice in. Alpen Maybe that was his plan all along. <laughs> could be, could be. He definitely didn't play like that was his plan. He played pretty really well until uh, he came up against Asher Bloss Wehrmacht. So, well, thank you so much for casting with me today, Finney. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure for me too. Thank you to all these wonderful referees uh, who have been very active in keeping things going. We've got Rachel, Sidewinder, Stern Panther. We've got Olvedi, Ficton Moped, Sula... And I think that's it. Mr. Doodoo offered to do some of the stuff as well. Dr. Dono, rather. Not Mr. Doodoo. <laughs> Couldn't get that worse. Uh, uh, more wrong. <laughs> I have um, so much struggle. I struggle so much with names. I mean, I can't even say Blo Blois. Blois. I think it's Blois. I've always said Blois like it's French. Asher Blois. But, okay, yeah, yeah, maybe it I is. it's easier to say as well. All right, then. We're ready to host Mr. Von Ivan. So let's get this. Oh, Raid Von Ivan. It's worked. Fantastic. Let's get on over there and watch Von Stream. Thank you so much for your support today. Cheers to Big Deans. Cheers to all the people in chat. Flyer to 99, you're a legend. Um, and uh, cheers, guys. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Cheers, everyone. Bye-bye.